So as you can see by the thumbnail, we have a lot to cover. And the thought bubble that's coming out of Latruth that says MOB, MOC, and MOP, that stands for money over money over children and money over principle. Shout out to my brother Stacy again. Come to find out the recently viral clip of Joe Smith and his wife, their argument about him finding out she's an OnlyFans model was staged. And it was staged, apparently, by the same dude who recently interviewed the Cheesecake people. Now, when I saw the Cheesecake interview, I thought, number one, this is a terrible interview. Um, he's not a good conversationalist. They both seem weird. But I didn't think maybe this was all staged. I know some people suspected it, but I try to not assume the worst. But come to find out, Kevin Wesley is Latruth's brother. Now, if you guys don't know Latruth, he gained a lot of fame on Facebook a few years back for his viral skits. Skits usually centering around infidelity. What people didn't realize is the woman that he was doing the skits with was his wife. But they played on this common trope and got a lot of followers and made a whole lot of money. Hey, why, 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 why are you with me? That makes why the marriage stronger. Here? Because that makes the marriage stronger. It don't stronger. make the marriage stronger on your wife then. What she don't oh, know. Okay. What she yeah. don't know. Yeah, she gonna find out. You keep, you keep, keep on. Oh my I'm god. Sorry. So that so I'm saying I, I tell her before you will okay. at the end of the day because I mean no I, I guess it'll be better if I say it. You got me to be about to fucking ass. You tripping? Like, yeah. You why can't you get like enough of this her? dick though. That's why you, why you keep doing her? this shit. Recently, La Truth and Miss La Truth divorced. Apparently, there was some domestic violence on her part. Apparently, their marriage, their glittery marriage, was a facade. Which isn't surprising, but before I get to this Joe Smith situation, we have to continue to address how social media has turned us into jesters, and more specifically, Black men. Unfortunately, we spend a lot of time talking about all the negative aspects as seen online that our women display. We don't spend enough time talking about how we, Black men, very often stage and the pun is very intended, these acts. And not just in staging scenarios like these dudes do, but also creating platforms for toxic and problematic people. For instance, if you look at Sexy Red, people like Sukiana, a lot of their management, a lot of the people who quote unquote put them on, a lot of the DJs who keep their music spinning, a lot of their fan base is full of black men. So brothers, if we expect to correct any of the nonsense that we see from our women in our community, we have to return to gatekeeping. We have to return to blocking out bullshit. We have to return to prioritizing integrity over money. But in this case, in many cases like it, it's all about the Benjamins. Now, apparently Joe Smith already knew his wife was on OnlyFans. They played on it, you know, for the purpose of the I suppose it's skit, but I think it's still worth the conversation. A lot of what I've been talking about is how very often a lot of men seek out problematic women. They deeply desire to play Captain save a And maybe it's because you're trying to save your mom and you might see some of the toxic aspects of your mom in a woman. And your child brain tells you that if only she had a good man, she would be better. And you try to be that good man for the younger version of your mom or the younger version of your aunties. And later on, when things go wrong, you want to look for sympathy. But it also brings up another case study that I did about Zion Williamson. And I talked about how, contrary to popular belief, athletes don't have the kind of riz that you think they do. Like I said in that video, to become a professional athlete at the top of your game, like Joe Smith was, he was a first overall pick. You have to dedicate your life to the sport. And very often it means sacrificing your social life. So these cues, the experience that's necessary to navigate women, sometimes it's lost on these guys. And very often it's because they never actually have to use it because women throw themselves at six foot five athletes. But what you also see happen with all these things combined is a lot of athletes, just like Zion Williamson, just like people like Lamar Odom, they actually like toxic, dirty, whore women. And maybe it's they want to save them. Or maybe it's some fetish. They just get off on women like that. Some of these rich dudes are swingers. Some of these rich dudes are 
avid visitors of sex clubs that go with their wife. You can have my wife, I'll take yours. Some of them get off on the fact that, oh, my wife is desirable to other men. Other men want to have sex with my wife, and that does something for me. Sometimes it does something for me to watch. So I'm not going to go too deep into that because, hey, if that's your lifestyle, it is what it is. But what I will say is, for the young dudes listening, in the great words of J. Cole, Lame can tell the difference. One time for who knows. She don't want to be saved, don't save her. She don't want to be saved, don't save her. She don't want to be saved, don't save her. She don't want to be saved. You have to realize that most people do not change. You have to make peace with whoever they have shown you that they are. If that means they are somebody who likes attention, somebody who likes to show off their body, and social media is a great place to figure that out. She's not going to change after you put a ring on it, bro. You just offered her the ultimate validation for her behavior. So later down the line, when she says to you, you knew who I was before you met me, you can get mad. And I often hear men complain about, you know, I, 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 I wifed her, I walked her down the aisle and the whole nine and she don't respect me. And very often when you investigate, she didn't respect you before any of that. And you just offered her the ultimate validation. So what reason would she have to now respect you? It's kind of like giving a shitty employee a raise and expecting them to work harder. With that said, let's talk about how to properly vet a woman before you engage in a relationship, definitely before you walk her down the aisle. And I would even say before you choose to take her on a date, whether the cheesecake or a coffee shop, you need to approach it as if you were a hiring manager. If you're seeking a job, first you apply for the job, you send in your resume and that resume not only has a list of your skills, but it also has a list of your history. And as a hiring manager, you have to ask yourself, how is this person's skills, and experiences transferable to the job that they're applying for. If we're building out some software product and this person has worked for Facebook in the past and they've built out a software product, yes, this will be a very, very good addition to the team. But if the only thing on their resume is Cheesecake Factory, she was a server at a hookah lounge and you hire her for that role and later on want to complain that she didn't live up to your expectations, you're an idiot. Her past matters. And I know in this current world, we act like it doesn't. Body count doesn't matter. Who her ex-boyfriends were doesn't matter. But I would tell you to pay attention to two things. Her past relationships and her relations. And what I mean by that is her relations are going to tell you kind of the stock that she comes from. So her mother, her father her sisters, her brothers, what kind of people is she used to being around? Because more than likely, that is the kind of person that she is going to be deep down. And eventually, whatever facade she has grown accustomed to using to mask herself will fall. You know, OGs will say, if you want to know what a woman is going to look like when she gets old, look at her mom. That's real. Similarly, if you want to know how a woman is going to act when she's married, look at her mom, look at her aunties. Does she come from an environment where people are used to being together, people are used to working through conflict? Or does she come from an environment where people are used to reality television and doing their best impressions of reality television? The other R is relationships. Back to the hiring manager analogy, where has she worked before? And why did she work there? And that's not to say that all her boyfriends should be great people or all the friends that she has are successful. But that's to say, what kind of environments does she seek out? Because ultimately that's what it is, right? We're born into certain families and then our friends are the family that we choose. I would say the same for our girlfriends and our boyfriends. So what kind of individual does she seek out? And what kind of individual seeks her out? Are her friends chaotic? She's probably chaotic. Are her friends hoes? She's probably a hoe. Are her friends unsuccessful? She's probably unsuccessful. OGs will tell you, your net worth is typically the average of your five closest friends. So what kind of men does she seek out? What kind of men does she entertain? And I know often women will say that 
when you're attractive, you attract everybody. That's absolutely true. When you're attractive, you attract everybody. But who you choose to entertain is an indictment on your character. If all her boyfriends were and shit and they were drug dealers and they were toxic and they were narcissistic and manipulative, one of two things is happening. Either she seeks and a part of her craves that type of personality or she is an incredibly terrible judge of character, which ultimately means she's irresponsible and an irresponsible woman is not a woman you want to build with. Some other telltale signs, her appearance. I hear people say, oh, she's a lot or I'm a lot. Typically, you can see that. Women who are a lot, (laughs) they tend to be a lot in their presentation. Their aesthetic is not simplistic. Their clothes are not minimalistic. They don't really take care of themselves like they should. They just adorn themselves with all kinds of shit. Nowadays, you see the nose rings and the waist beads and the belly ring and the all kinds of stuff just to adorn herself typically in my experience that's a telltale sign that she's a lot that's a telltale sign that she craves attention that's also a telltale sign that she gets bored quickly primarily with herself so how do you think that's going to play out for you also her conversation is she interesting and inquisitive or is she dry and self-absorbed And that's what pisses me off sometimes when I hear some of these stories about women that were taken on dates and something happened. Like when y'all were texting, when you guys were on the phone, what was her conversation like that validated you spending your time, energy, and then your money on this woman? Because for me, if we're going on a date, it's because we had a conversation that told me maybe there's something additional for us to talk about, for us to potentially collaborate on. And for me, I'm going straight to either a walk or a coffee date. Very low expectations and very low pressure. Because ultimately, we need to figure out if we even like being in each other's presence. So don't fall for all this bullshit where it's like a real man would spend $300 on a date or a real man would take me here and there. If a woman is talking like that, oh, coffee dates, I'm too good for coffee dates. That's another telltale sign that she's a bad hire. And if you choose to move forward, you get what you get, brother. Pay attention to her space. If you guys' interaction graduates to you going over to her place or even you picking her up, pay attention to where she chose to live. And obviously, that doesn't mean she has to be rich or whatever the case may be, but pay attention to... Number one, the environment that she chooses to live or that she's forced to live. Maybe your guys are teenagers or whatever the case may be. And juxtapose that with her personality. Is she a rose that grew from concrete or is she just another rock? And you have to be honest in your assessment of that. And more than anything, pay attention to her actual inner space, whether it's her apartment, her dorm room, her house. Where does she feel comfortable in? Is her space chaotic, unkempt, dirty stuff all over the place, crumbs here and there, dust here and there? Because not only is that a reflection of her mind and her mental state more often than not, it's also a reflection of what you guys' house is going to look like if your relationship progresses. Because right now, assuming she doesn't have children, her responsibilities are low, so if she can't keep her room looking good, her apartment looking good, her house looking good. Add some kids to the mix and see what happens. And very often, if her space isn't tidy, her body isn't either. You might smell something, if you know what I'm saying, that you might not like. I would say lastly, look at her social media. Is this a woman who likes to show off her body? Is this a woman who spends a whole lot of time trying to grow her following her and her exposure. And I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all right now, I wouldn't date any entertainers. Entertainers tend to be very interesting people. That's what I'll say. And I think Will Smith and Jada Pinkett are good examples of that. At the core, they're theater kids. At the core, they tend to be kids who are so neglected, just like Kirk Franklin's story, that they overcompensate for that by seeking external validation from strangers. And that's why my social media following matters and the number of likes that I get matters. 
So I would, I would proceed with caution when it comes to entertainers. Obviously, strippers, OnlyFans, models, bartenders, bottle girls, hairdressers, nurses. I could make a list, but I would say those are off limits, especially the ones that are overt sex workers. But ultimately, fellas, I hope what I have demonstrated with this channel is how to actually listen to women. I hope I've demonstrated how to talk to women. I hope I've demonstrated how to actively listen to what they say and what they don't say. And I hope I've demonstrated how to actually let them speak because very often people will tell on themselves and you get to decide what you're willing to and what you're not willing to tolerate. Because again, the world will not show you any sympathy as a man. So you must be diligent and pragmatic as if you were a hiring manager.